In the great state of Montana, game wardens fight a daily battle. They fight to enforce state game laws and protect our natural resources. Today, Region 4 wardens find themselves with conflicting stories. Why did you shoot that one and leave it? After further investigation, it turns out this guy can do nothing right. You hold, we'll hold on to it here. We're going to have a talk, chat about it. In Region 6, wardens find themselves tracking down would-be trespassers. It all happens right now. In White Sulphur Springs, the hunting season's coming to an end. The last few days of the season, ranches open their gates to all hunters. Landowners hope to thin the elk herd, and that means lots of hunters and lots of work for state game wardens. It's a good chance for first time hunters and other people that, you know, can't necessarily get out all year because it's a lot of ground to hunt and a lot of elk usually, so. What we're doing today, it's the last two days of the season and pretty much all the landowners in the area are either allowing some sort of access or complete access, so we're trying to just see where the big bunches of elk are at and maybe try to be where things are happening just to make sure everything's on the up and up. From a distance, Warden John Lasovsky keeps an eye on the herd, and he's not alone. Sounds like they're on the edge of lane is where it's at, okay. most of the big bunch is. Good luck to you guys. All right. We'll see you All later. Right. Yeah. Our landowners do a real good job of making sure things are right um, in this particular area. Give us access to come in and monitor the situation, and that's what we're doing today. I hope there's people walking. I don't know what all these people are doing standing. That's what we'll be looking for is any of the chase. This deal that we got going here is it's like any of the end of the season hunts. Doesn't matter if it's gardener or some of these bigger ranches that are opening up and they allow the public to come in and try to take down some of the elk herd. It, um, it's not always a, a hunt, it's a harvest. And um, long and short of that deal is, is they take quite a few animals and, and uh, it's done with quite a few people at one time and it's not always pretty, but it's needed. I mean, we have to get the populations down just for the, you know, the, the uh, elk side of it. <laughs> I like that. There's the first shot. Another shot. Here comes the herd. Once the herd gets on the move, so are the hunters. You know, if all these other people have permission, I mean, do what, what Dennis? What do I do with all the hunters that are out there? Six or seven guys here with me, okay. and Bill Loney's uh, girl that does his house. Yeah. She's down there with three pickups with them, and she has. The milk right above Loney's house. We had a big shootout right above his house. Although this hunt is a bit unique, hunters must follow Montana laws. Wardens have a tough time monitoring the hunt with so many people shooting in so many places. Team Gitter, I got rigs everywhere, shooting elk everywhere. There's five rigs that I can see, Steve, that are completely off-road. Where are you at, John? You'll see me. Come up the road and look to your left. A blue pickup catches Warden Lasovsky's attention. The driver's completely off the road and appears to chase down a lone elk. The blue pickup that they were, they were chasing right at him, shooting both sides out the window right there. Both wardens spot the pickup. Behind those quakies just to the north side of it. Yeah, that's our guys. That's the one. They left an elk out there. He's coming back around. Um, they're basically in pursuit with that vehicle. There's an elk coming out between you and them. Let it happen. 
Hey, watch that vehicle, the blue one, coming out of the Quakies there. Just exactly what they did last time. See if they make a run on him. I'm watching the one else with this guy in pursuit. See what he does. The driver closes in on the helpless animal. White Sulphur Springs, Montana. In Region 4, State Game Wardens John Lasovsky and Steve Vintage keep watch over the state's end of season elk hunt. The wardens watch as hunters in a pickup truck chase down and shoot an elk from the vehicle. Now they're trying to corner a second animal. There's an elk coming out between you and them. Let it happen. The driver gets within shooting distance and leans out the window. Seconds later, the elk drops. Well, you just stuck it out the window. That elk just hit the ground awful hard and I watched the driver lean forward. Never did get out of his vehicle. I'll be honest with you, I came around the corner and it was like helter skelter. I mean, it was pretty western. There was vehicles running and chasing both directions and elk running both ways. And we just didn't have the ability to dial in on any one person, but I did dial in on that truck. Neither of them had orange on. He still got to have orange on. The elk was running away, it was hit. And then he, he did a Brody. The elk ran behind his pickup, he did a Brody. There was an elk in front of him and an elk behind him. He does a 360 degree tur a turn, runs right up alongside of that elk, sticks her out the window and knocks that elk down and then they leave. And then he goes bolt racing around the backside of them willows. We lose track of him and that's when you saw him. It didn't look good, it didn't smell good. I know we got the tail end of it, but bad deal. The wardens aren't convinced the hunter followed the rules. Lasovsky decides to question a second group of hunters. I don't think so. <laughs> so you might must have wounded this one to start with. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> so here's my deal um, with this whole thing. You guys did everything right, tried to get an elk and got it all done right. Okay, who's the guy in the blue pickup here? Yeah, the guy that came up and finished, he finished your elk. Oh, I don't know who they are, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. okay. So he's not part of your crew. Yeah. All right, that's, no. who, that's who I want to talk to. Yeah. The warden decides to confront the driver in question. What do you know? Here's my deal with this whole thing. When you, this first elk gets you shot up here. The one I finished? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part, part. Right. Um, I know that the, do you, you have the special permit in your pickup, right? Yeah. Do you? I, I took them out because they were blown on the dash, but they're right up on the But visor. you do have them, understand? Right. Okay, pursuit, you don't get to do. Okay, okay. understand that? You don't get to chase them. Although the driver can legally shoot from his truck, Lasovsky believes he unfairly chased the elk. Why did you shoot that one and then leave it? Just decided to... Cause, yeah, it was dead. Well, I understand that, but why did you take it? Because it wasn't my kill. You shot it, and the, 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 your, yeah. when you shoot it, it is your kill. Okay. I it See? Was, no, I, I, that's probably my fault. Okay. It no, it's the killing it's shot it, on every it. animal is who okay. tags that animal. Do you have your conservation on you? Okay. So here's the deal. I'm not... They've tagged that elk, okay, and I understand. Yeah, that's... We're done with that. All right. So but you, you finish what you're doing, okay. and we'll have a, have a chat here in a minute. Basically what I'm doing with this is after the elk got shot, we watched the one elk, he finished it, but he left it. And somebody else tagged it, which was fine. Um, he's, you know, basically if they knew each other, whatever the case was, they shot it first, he put it down. What I had the issue was, uh, or what I had the issue with, was specifically the fact that he was in pursuit. So I'm gonna write him a ticket for pursuit. I don't think that the animal deserves that. You have your handicap sticker. Yes, there. Can I take a peek at it, please? Yeah, right, John, just go in the driver's window. Okay. Yep. 
Oh, perfect. Do you have your card? Okay. They give you a, a handicap no, card. No, I I just got this a week ago. So okay. it just kind of it's probably it's probably in my car still. Okay. It's, but you can do you could get that to me, right? Let me whip let me whip back over here. Let me whip around. Lasovsky questions the man further. So you, you did this because you broke your leg. Right. And just couldn't get out and walk. All right. So here's what I need you to do. When you get your card, okay, I need you to go and you take the sheriff's office, you photocopy that for me and leave it, just leave it in my box, okay? okay. This wrote you a citation for the pursuit. It, it is what it is. It's basically an unlawful use of vehicle to hunt big game animals, to which chasing cow elk with vehicle in pursuit, okay? Okay. The ticket carries a maximum fine of $535. The warden decides to release the driver after ordering him to send proof of his handicap car. Thanks for being cordial. Yep. yep. Stay off your leg, okay. you get those back. Do me the favor. Uh, just drop a mic, drop your card off to me, please. See you later. We just issued a ticket for pursuing big game while while hunting. Um, he was out here with his pickup. These elk were running out here fairly hard. He uh, made no bones about whipping his pickup around and chasing a cow elk down and sliding up alongside of the elk and killed the elk outside of his window. Um, there's some issues of whether or not he actually has a uh, license as far as being a disabled permit. He has the stickers, he doesn't have a card, but if he doesn't have a disabled license, things could get a little more difficult for him. Coming up, wardens have more questions for this elk hunter. The guy that was out there, the other warden, he went ahead and called to find out if he had one. Okay. He says you don't have one. Near Ritchie, Montana, State Game Warden Steve Marks is on morning patrol. He gets his first call of the day. A rancher reports hunters trespassing and killing a deer on his property. As Mark begins to respond, he spots hunters near the reported shooting area. So I don't see where these guys got a four-wheeler with them right now, but. They're hunting in the area very close to where we're going, I know that. Hello, guys. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Good. The warden checks these hunters. Let's have you set your guns in the truck and we'll look at licenses and birds and stuff real sure. quick. Have you guys gotten any deer? Uh, yeah, not today. Not today? Yeah. Okay. We got two so far. Okay. What'd you get for deer then? Just a white tail and a muley. Okay. Bucks. Okay. When did you get your buck, John? Um, what day was it? It was uh, two days ago. Yeah. What's today? Friday. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it was on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's tagged. Okay. And where's Barry Smith? Okay. We're staying at his house. Okay. Yep. How about the other fellow? When did he get his? He got his in the morning. He shot his right behind Larry's house, um, this little seven-point white tail. Okay. And then I shot that muley back in there behind Larry's. Okay. All right. Well, what do we got for birds? We got a yeah. sharp tail and a pheasant, yep. said? Yep. Okay. Do you have any birds, sir? No. No? Yeah. Do you guys have a four-wheeler in your party? Yep. You do? Yep, we okay. have two of them. Um, got a call from a landowner who was concerned about a deer might have been shot on his place without permission. And it sounded like whoever it was was possibly on a four-wheeler. Okay. Is there, is there a chance that it might have been one of you guys got off on the wrong place? Well, no, I mean, we shot both of ours behind Larry's, but we did. I shot one at a whitetail behind Schultz's on that walk-in. Okay. We parked our four-wheelers on Schultz's and went On the down. school on section? School. So you know where Paul Schultz, uh, Paul Schultz lives. Uh -huh. So on that that fence line with the walk-in, uh -huh. that north side we parked the four-wheelers in there and went in and, in and it was wounded. 
We never, never. We haven't gotten anything on anybody else's land. Uh uh, it's all Larry's. Yeah. Many other guys hunting on Larry's or? Yeah, there's a lot of people signing in. Okay. Um, we see them around once in a while. You know, that Jimmy from Ritchie, and then there's a guy from, I uh, used to live around here, Ian. He used to live in Bozeman now. Okay. He signed in, and then there's three guys from Minnesota staying at Larry's, too, that came uh, Wednesday night. They got there. Okay. Have they gotten any deer? Do they you got know? one muley buck. When did they get theirs? Do you Yesterday know? they got theirs. The warden has the hunters show him on a map exactly where they harvested their deer. We have we have permission for our um, Schultz's here, Paul's, all this. They have permission to hunt the private property. When you got your deer, did you got them where they fell? Yep. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, they were down in the way down in there, so we had to get as much weight off them as possible. Okay. I mean, we had the tie four wheelers together, get mine out, and dropped way in. Okay. And he has actually dropped in that one too, but we drug it out and then wenched it. There's a gut pile where his is too, where he got last shot. Okay. Well, I may need to talk with you guys later. Okay. Um, because I'm gonna I'm gonna meet with this guy and check the tracks and okay. and see what the situation is. But you guys will be yeah, at Larry's yep. tonight or later. Okay. Yeah, he showed me on the map. He pointed right to the property boundary. So. Probably a pretty good chance these guys are the guys we're looking at. I guess we'll verify there's a gut pile on on this complainant's property and go from there. In Montana's Region 4, Warden John Lasovsky's hot on the trail of a crooked elk hunter. Question for you. Do you know yeah. do you know where <laughs> lives? I do. Um I need to go have a chat with him. A day earlier. The warden watched the man in question chase down and shoot two elk from his pickup truck. The man told wardens he had a special handicap permit but couldn't produce his car. After a bit of research, wardens sniffed out the hunter's story. He lied to me yesterday and uh, told me that he had some handicap stickers and he was chasing elk and shooting them out of the window. And, um, we have just found out that he doesn't have any sort of registration, so I'm going to say hello to him. Okay, well, we're going to say hello, and I am going to yank his elk, and that's how that's going to go, so. Warden Lasovsky asks for backup and heads to the hunter's home address. There's the pickup right there. Suddenly, the suspect pulls up in a car. Are you still hobbling around? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, we just were by. Just wanted to see if I could see that card that you have. Oh, sh Um, yeah, sh I'm over that. Okay, you don't have it? Not on me, no. Okay. Um, um, leave me a minute here. Okay. The wardens run out of patience. What? Jump in my pickup here quick. Let me chat at you. So, Anyway, so here's the deal, deal on this, and I, you know, let's let's save us both some time. The guy that was out there, the other warden, he went ahead and called to find out if you had one. Okay. He says you don't have one. Yeah. So whose are those? Um, they're actually Jennifer's granddad. Okay. So and that's the deal. He he said to go ahead and use them because I sure. my leg. And sure. The shooter admits trying to use someone else's handicap tags. I did, and I was like. Oh. There goes my f***ing season. I don't right. have a job. And right. F you know. Hey, and, and, and to start with, you know, we we provide a lot of meat for the food bank as well. If I know somebody's in town here that could use a quarter of an elk, I drop it by. But what I want you to understand here is just exactly, so don't get all panicked and freak out on me here when I show you all this stuff, right? I'm going to give you a start and I'm going to give you a finish. So the bottom line is yesterday when we got to chasing at the elk and whatever else, we, we gunned that one. That's a potential over limit. You didn't tag that animal, you left it. It wasn't a waste of game, but it could have been for you because you left it and it could have potentially been an over limit as well. Okay, um, so that's that portion of it, right? Okay. Each time you jumped out of the pickup, you didn't have a lick of orange on. Right. 
you're jumping out, you're the only blue shirt out there hopping around gunning yeah. stuff. You, you yeah. follow me? Yeah. Okay. And at the end right here, potentially a possession, which is $535, okay? I mean, you've got actually two cases of possession, a potential over limit. The licenses, you got about two grand in charge that we're not doing, okay? Last but not least, these tags right here, mm -hmm. the fact that he gave you these, yep. he, he can be in trouble. You can't just transfer these things. All right. What we did do is the pursuit, the harassment of the elk, what we are doing is shooting from their vehicle because you don't have the ability to do that. Yeah. All right, so that's where we're at. If you're shy meat, John, I'm shy meat, and I'll make sure you, something floats your direction. Right. So that's where we're at. That's I would just as soon do that than to see that wreck out there. The warden writes two tickets, one for shooting from a vehicle and the other for obstructing a peace officer, and then delivers more bad news. Here's the hard part. That elk goes with me. Okay, it does. If you're shy of meat here, we'll work on that, okay? But that elk goes with me. I don't have a choice. What time do you want to get this elk? Now. Now? Yep. Okay. Um, um, I got it hanging ready and stuff. Where's it hanging at? Down the street here, about two blocks. I'll follow you. Okay. Okay, and then we'll go from there, okay? okay. Yeah, give me a minute here. Okay. Down at the house, another roadblock. We don't have the keys here. Okay, um, whose place is it? Oh, it is yep. Um Do you wanna? Well, I'll tell you what, let me, okay, let's ask this question right now. Okay. Is there something else in that garage that he doesn't want me to see? Nope. No other game in there? Nope. The only? Straight with me. Honest to God, because the game that's in there is the game that you seen in the back of that pickup yesterday. Call him over here. Hey, so you can't get in that garage? I don't have the keys on me, no. Who's, who has the keys? I do, it's there at home. Here in town? Yeah. So you can go get those keys? Yeah, I could, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. will go get those keys. Okay, I can sure. I understand sure. what I'm saying. I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. The warden orders the second man to go home and get keys to open the garage. Trying to shortstop me with they don't have a key isn't gonna fly, we got enough to get a a search warrant if we need to do that, and we'll do that. Today in Region 4, Warden John Lasovsky witnessed a hunter shoot an elk from a vehicle. The hunter then showed the warden his handicap decal, enabling him to do so. The only problem is, as it turns out, the handicap permit was not his. He lied to me yesterday and uh, told me that he had some handicap stickers and he was chasing elk and shooting them out of the window. and. Okay, well, we're going to say hello, and I am going to yank his elk, and that's how that's going to go, so. And now, out on the snowy hills of eastern Montana, Warden Steve Marks stops to chat with a local rancher. The landowner says someone has illegally killed deer on his property. The warden wants to find the shooter. Well, we just talked to some hunters that have killed a couple deer north of here, and so they could be the guys that were in there. When, when do you think this happened? Yesterday or the day before. We want to go up there and see what we can see. The rancher agrees to lead the warden to the spot where he thinks two deer may have been illegally shot. That's going to be east, a little bit further on of that state section. The warden spots the first gut pot. I do see man tracks coming down over there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. This is probably one of their deer, I'm guessing. And the thing with these four-wheeler tracks, you know, you got an old post here. I mean, we're right, we're, we're right on the edge of whether they're on that state section or not. That's right. It's pretty splitting hairs there. No. The warden decides the first kill was in fact legal and on adjacent property. Next, he'll try to find the second gut pile. The rancher spots a set of ATV tracks and the warden follows them.
Is that blood or is that kind of a scoria? Yeah, that is blood in the snow there. Yeah, that is blood going, going that way. It appears they're closing in on a second kill site, 250 miles to the west near Columbus, Montana. Tip my call. Hello, this is Paul. In Region 5, Game Warden Paul Lubke chases down hunters who are reported to have untagged and ungutted deer. We got a tip mark call that uh, a hunter had seen some guys from uh, Minnesota in this truck coming out of, the, of a block management area with an ungutted, untagged mule deer buck, and he thought it was a, a pretty nice one. We should have two deer according to the call that I got. The warden spots the truck and makes the stop. I'm going to stop them just right here on the other side of the tracks here, just where we have some more light. Oh. How we doing, guys? Good, how are you? How's it on today? It was good. Good, how many folks you got back there? Four. Two in the back and two up here. How are you guys? Good. Where's everybody from? From Billings. From Billings. Everybody's from Billings? Yep. Okay. Does this truck have Minnesota plates on it? Yeah, this yeah. is my father-in-law's truck. Who's your father-in-law? Uh, Jim Donovan. Okay, where does he live? He has a place in Reed Point, cabin. Okay, are you guys staying with him then? Yeah, we're staying Okay. Do you have any reason why I'm pulling you over here? Any, you have any idea? No. So you got a couple critters back there. Who shot what? I shot the four by four. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't have no tape to put it on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll come around. The warden checks tags for the deer. There's no tape at all in this truck? No. Okay. We looked. We looked. Trust me. Okay. We looked. Why we, were, we were going to try okay. to tie it on there, but then I was afraid it was going to blow off. Is there a tag on the other deer? No. He had yeah. the other tag. Yeah. You shot the other one? Yeah. Okay. It's not validated. You put two small holes in it. Well, I got a call that you had two deer without tags on it, and that's exactly what I'm seeing. A lot of people will figure out a way to attach the tag. The tag has to be on the animal, correct? With an untagged deer on the trailer, it appears these hunters might need to answer more than just a few questions. Why did you guys not gut them out right away when they fell? In Montana's Region 6, State Game Warden Steve Marks investigates a reported trespassing case. A landowner accuses hunters of illegally shooting deer on his property. Is that blood or is that kind of a scoria? Yeah, that is blood going, going that way. Yeah, I can see it back over. Sure. Yeah, see that I little see notch right there. there. There looks like the kill site. There's a bunch of blood. Oh, yeah. There's the gut pile. Earlier, the warden questioned two men who said they had shot two deer in the area. After investigating, it looks like the men shot the deer legally, but might have cut across the man's property to retrieve the harvested animals. That's exactly what they did. We backtracked the um, gut pile to where we think is a kill location on this deer. Um, they said that it was gut shot, so this is matching up to the hunter's story that it was gut shot. You see a large amount of hair here and, and, um, and intestinal material, so kind of leads to the fact that it was probably shot here. So we got some hunters that shot a deer where they had permission. That deer eventually got over onto you, and they actually drug it out across part of your, your property. They hadn't contacted you. Something like this, the law says, you have to have permission to, to hunt. That includes retrieval or crossing private land to hunt. Um, but it's kind of it's up to you, you know, whether you want a, a ticket wrote or, or what you want me to do with this. I wish they would have contacted me and asked me about four wheelers and stuff like that. Sure. More than likely, it's probably just an honest mistake on their part. But I wouldn't mind shaking the tree pretty hard with those guys so okay. they don't cross over or tell their buddies to come in here and push the boundaries. Well, I'll go back. There's one guy in the group I haven't checked yet. Look at his license and, and we'll visit about the kill site and stuff, verify that this is their kill site, which I think it is. All right, Rick, I'll, I'll talk to these guys. You didn't want me to cite them is what I gathered, so take care. The warden agrees to revisit the hunters. When you guys went in and got it, 
So Bru there's an old road we use because it's so big. We we were gonna cut it up, but then we thought, well, there's a road there. But you had to let the fence down to get in there, right? Yep. And then you come down the road. Yep. And then there's actually another fence line that you went across to get to your gut pile, right? That's Larry's old, because yeah, I mean that's. Well, here's here's what the issue is: is actually not Larry's, but the fence line goes around the coulee. The men decide to check out a map and reconfirm the property boundaries. Yep. Apparently you guys were somewhere close to that rock Actually, shelf. Actually that rock shelf was, so we were right across diagonally from that rock shelf. So basically the rock shelf was like that angle and we were here. We, we did see some four-wheeler tracks through the gate there. Okay. That's, that is... That's that, Olson's too? No, it's all walk-in on the oh. school section. Turns out the hunters did not understand the exact property boundaries. After both deer tags check out, the warden decides it's appropriate to only issue a warning. All right, John, here's your conservation license back. Okay. This is just a written warning. If I was to write a ticket on this, it would be a $135 ticket. Okay. And you'd lose a deer. Okay. That. Okay. <laughs> and, that's, that one. and like I said, it's kind of up to the landowner. He felt, you know, that you guys weren't trying to sneak in there or anything oh. on him, so he didn't, he didn't want a ticket wrote on this. Okay. So that's for your record. Well, thanks again. All right. Appreciate With that, the warden wraps up his investigation. Have a safe trip. Yeah. Yeah. Still ahead. So what do we got in here? A Montana hunter finds himself in hot water after the warden discovers too many harvested elk. Do I have to do a bunch of hunting around and chasing around on this guy too? White Sulphur Springs, Montana. In Montana's Region 4, Warden John Lasovsky investigates a hunter accused of chasing and shooting elk from his truck. The man first told wardens he had a handicap permit. Now Warden Lasovsky needs to confiscate the suspect's harvested elk. Okay, so what do we got in here? This is the what, that's the one that you're, uh, is that the one? This is Gucci's. Okay, what do we have here now then? Um, I know, but which is yours? The warden discovers a second L and suspects it could be another illegal kill. Mm -hmm. Do I have to do a bunch of hunting around and chasing around this guy too? No. Okay, he's here, he's legit. He's in town, yeah, he's legit, yeah. Okay, and I need to find him. You need to find him? Yeah, he needs to get here. Hey, um, can you come down to where the elk are hanging? The uh, game warden wants to ask you some questions, I guess. You just decided not to validate your tag? It appears this hunter did everything wrong trying to harvest an elk. <sighs> You hold, we'll hold on to it here. We're gonna have a talk, chat about it. Let's put this chair up here and I can get up there and get it. Okay. This other guy's showing up? Yeah, he should be here. How do you, how do you know this guy? Um, he's out from Sydney, Montana. Okay. And oil fields and stuff too. And I was out there kind of working and met him in a bar. Right. We started talking about hunting and that was that. <laughs> hey, you your <laughs> you got your conservation license with you here? Yes, and your driver's license? Yep. And where do you live? Sydney, Montana. Okay. Yeah, I've been All there right, for... So I'll hop in my pickup here for a second. All right. The warden spots another problem and starts asking questions. So right. what do you do in Sydney, Montana? I'm a land surveyor. I moved to Sydney so I could come out here and hunt. Okay. Basically. Okay. So, and, you, and so let me ask you this. When you bought these tags, 
Do you see what your address says right yeah, there? You know, they goofed up on it and they... Did you give them a, a Minnesota driver's license? No. Well, see, when I originally came out here, I was a non-resident. Okay. Okay, so I bought non-resident tags. Okay. And then I went back next year, okay. or whatever, that next year, and they ended up giving me that. So this, you can see where this is a problem? Yep, this is a I resident do. license with a Minnesota uh, I, address on it. I understand that, and I, I went through this with them already. Okay. I really did. So here's, here's the deal. I'm gonna take this information down, yep. do a little bit more background, and, okay. and I hope you're being straight with me, because I don't have the time and you don't have the time. Right. Anyway, well, good luck, you guys. All right. Another note. Yep. Yep, you too. The Bach and Boom's going in North Dakota, and I fully expect to see more of this going on. This guy come from Sydney, Montana, which is about 20 to 30 miles from the North Dakota border. Um, on his resident tag is his Minnesota uh, address, and it just isn't adding up. I don't have the resources to really do a good investigation here, but we're gonna follow up on it and see what this guy's all about. Losovsky needs to confiscate the first of the illegally harvested elk. He quarters it and packs it for the local food bank. There are lots of eyeballs in my direction. I understand that. You know, we have big shootouts like that and they see stuff. They wanna know if we're doing our job. Absolutely, that's, sure. That's part of the gig. But I can tell you this much right now, I ain't ever gonna, I don't think you gotta worry about me hunting in Montana. Well, it's a simple deal. Just go shoot when, like everybody else, crawl out your pickup when you're better, put your orange on and go get one. Every Just time I get turned in, even if I'm legal. Yeah. It's well, what, well, this isn't. Let's 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 just, let's be honest about this, right? I mean, we've talked a couple times sure. when it's been completely legal. Sure. Some turning me in. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and give me the benefit of the doubt. I don't have a choice. Somebody turns it in. I got to go talk. And, and if, so you know, you know, being the local warden isn't the easiest thing in the whole world either. I mean, because everybody's turning everybody in, and it, we got to look at. It. We got to investigate everything that comes down the pipe. So understand that it's not an attack on you, it's it's us doing our job. So, all right. Yeah. Hey, you tired of me? I, I, I get it, I get it. All right, let's 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 leave it at that, and uh, we'll be chatting. Yep. So, we took care of that. Ended up, uh, we seized one elk um, for, basically, well, hazing him, chasing him, pursuing him, um, shooting out of the vehicle. He had in possession some handicap stickers that weren't his, and how we addressed that was basically to write an obstruction charge for lying to us and trying to steer us away from what the actual problem was, so we're done. Up next, Warden Paul Lupke has his hands full with a late night stop. Well, I got a call that you had two deer without tags on it, and that's exactly what I'm seeing. Do you know why ungutted deer is of interest to me? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Okay. Near Columbus, Montana, State Game Warden Paul Lupke responds to a tip mod call. The caller reported seeing hunters with untagged and unfield dressed deer on a trailer. The warden tracks down the truck and makes a stop. Now, he wants some answers. Well, I got a call that you had two deer without tags on it, and that's exactly what I'm seeing. The hunters say they have legal tags, but no tape to attach them to the animal. Well, what's your name again? I'm Brad. Brad? Yeah. Okay. Brad, hop out and come back here with me, and I'll visit with everybody, okay? So you guys just be cool. How are the guns there? Are they all unloaded? All right. Which one is yours? This one's mine. Was there any problem about where these things were killed? No. Are they on, were they on yes. block management? Yep, yep. So they, he has the piece of paper, okay. Jake does. But what about, where they were, what about where they were shot? Is there any chance they could have been on the neighbor's property or anything like that? No. Whether you knew it or not, actually. The warden asked plenty of questions. No chance of that. No. So why is, why do you think his tag is notched out very hurriedly? I would probably say it's because he has hunted as much. And he, were you, you with know? him? No, I wasn't. Okay. I just want to know, when I asked you when exactly did you fill this thing out? I didn't have one. Did you fill it out in the field or did you fill it out I in the truck? I filled out in the field. Why did you guys not gut them out right away where they fell? No, I did. 
Okay. When he failed, I got it down. What about the other one? They did too. Right when it failed, they got it down. Okay. Because these guys that talked to you up there, do you remember talking to some people up yes. there? Yes. Yep. Okay. They said it was ungutted. No, they were gutted. That's that's ridiculous. I wasn't there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is just information that I've received. Yeah. So that's why I'm looking into it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. I'm not. Yep. I don't know you. I'm not being yep. hard on you. I'm just being hard on the situation. Yeah. Okay. Because I want to make sense of this. Do you know why? Ungutted deer is of interest to me. <laughs> I actually I don't know. Okay. I I mean I've always done it. Is okay. gutted as I kill it because yeah. <laughs> well, it lines it up a little bit. An ungutted deer to me means that the person shot it where they weren't supposed to be, so they didn't want to leave a gut pile. Yeah. They don't want to leave evidence, so they take the whole thing out. Oh. You know what I mean? Yep. After hearing the driver's version of the story, Warden Lukey pulls a second hunter aside. I just want to talk with David real quick, just over here in private and then I'll probably get you guys going. Okay. So which one is yours? The, the, the smaller one? Yeah. Alright, yeah. come on back to my truck real quick. I just want to ex explain myself a little bit so you know. You can put your hands okay. in your pocket. All right. I see, I know you got a pistol and I see all the other stuff, but it's cold and we deal with that and this isn't Miami, so. Thank you. I'm going to assume you're not going to pull out a... <laughs> Pull out a pig sticker and take a run at me, right? No. Okay. When I get a report that there's an untagged, ungutted animal on top of a four-wheeler, that piques my interest, right? I understand. So that's why I'm initially stopping you guys. So I want to make sure that what you told me is consistent with what all the other guys told me and everything. Okay. So where did you gut this animal that you shot that you intend to put this tag on? I gutted him at the base of the the first ridge there in that open field. It's, a, it's about, it's 180 yards from the top of the ridge. Is it right where he fell? That's common, right? Yes, yeah. And the reason why the tags weren't attached? Exactly what Brad said, we didn't have tape. And I was like, should we stick them on there? And he said it'd be better to have them on us. So, okay. that was kind of the... All right. Okay, don't leave. Okay. Until you get these back from me. Give me about five minutes, I'll be right back with All you, right. okay? Thanks, thanks. You guys see how armed right, the right, teeth right, those guys are? One guy had a knife, a pistol, and a rifle. People just in Montana, they like they like to run around like that for whatever reason, so. Turns out the men did not follow all of the rules. All right, and Brad and David again, and then you guys can relax. You're gonna be out of here in about two minutes, all right? All right, Brad. You broke one law, David. You broke two laws. They both have to have them attached. You know that, so I don't need to lecture you on this. Yeah. You need to do a better job of notching. Copy Brad's homework from now on, because his notch is good, <laughs> your notch is bad, okay? Okay. So, you got a big old knife there. Why don't you notch that out quick? I'll give you yours back. Well, you're 100% sure, because I got to go back out there in the morning. But I'm going to find gut piles where you say there's going to be gut piles, right? Yeah, yep. you'll see spun out right by the bottom there's of the There's not going to be any guts. I mean, there's going to be two gut piles, right? Unless they're eaten piles. by wolves or something tonight, which could happen. Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. cool. Here's some tape. Thanks, sir. Thank Slap you. some tape on those things. And while you're doing that, I'll explain to you that I'm writing each written warnings for that. I'm not going to take your deer. You're not getting tickets. You're just getting paper warnings. Right? All right, there you go. Right. You don't, I mean, it doesn't require any legal action on your guys' part. It's just a reminder. It shows that I'm doing my job that goes into a database. The warden issues a couple of warnings and allows the hunters to go. Thank All right. Thank you, you sir. Have a good one. With that, the wardens wrap up their day. Tomorrow, they're back on the job. A new day, new challenges. They are the wardens.